Welcome back everybody. Today we'll be looking at what is an impulse and what is an impact. There is a slight nuance between the two and in this video we'll dive a little bit deeper and see what we mean by these two different words. We derive the idea of the linear impulse momentum equation which is this thing right here. And what pops out from the derivation is this integral right here which is an integral of a force over some given amount of time. And what we define that as is this idea of impulse. So let's redraw that example that we saw in the previous video. So we have some particle or some ball and it changes its momentum because there's some external force acting upon it. And this will be the sum of the external forces acting on the object. So this right here, this force is an impulse because the force is intended that it will act or make contact with the object that we're interested in for a given amount of time. And for that amount of time that it's allotted with that contact, it will change the object's momentum such that it'll be in this direction instead of this direction. So by definition we could say that impulse is any given external force that changes momentum regardless of how long it is in contact with the object of interest. So let me demonstrate an example of impulse. So let's say we have a ball and it's on a surface that is very frictional, meaning it has, a, has friction with it. It's on a smooth contact surface. And let's say it has some initial momentum, we'll call that MV1. And there's going to be some frictional force acting right where the ball is in contact with the surface. And we'll denote that as F. And we'll also say this is T1, meaning the time that we start looking at the object of interest. And then some time later, the ball is going to have to stop due to friction. The ball will not actually rotate in the opposite direction because friction only exists when an object is in motion. So if the object is not in motion anymore, then friction stops existing. So what we could say is that some time later, we'll say that's T2, this object's momentum at this given time is actually equal to zero because the object has stopped moving. And that's because of the frictional force with the contact surface. And this is actually a pretty obvious change in momentum because as we can see here, we have some momentum in the beginning and then at the end we have zero momentum, meaning the object is at rest. So therefore, this frictional force F is an impulse based on this de definition that is up here. A force acting upon an object over an allotted amount of time. But typically we do not say that friction is an impulse. And I'll explain that a little bit later after we go through another example of impulse or a more specific example of impulse known as an impact. So let's take this baseball being hit by this bat and see how the momentum changes in this scenario. So we could say that this object has some initial momentum and then after it makes contact with the bat it changes the momentum in this direction. And then the bat is actually the impulse that causes this change in momentum. So we could say that there's this force due to the bat. So we'll just say that's the sum of the external forces acting on the baseball, which changes its momentum. Now what's special about this impulse is that the time of the contact between the baseball and the bat is very, very, very small. So we could say that T1 acts right there, but also at the same, sort of same time, we could say T2 acts at a very small time later. So we could say that DT, which is T2 minus T1, or the time in contact between the ball and the baseball bat, is very, very, very small. And this is the idea of impact. So by definition, the idea of impact, which is a more specific case of impulse, is that it's a large force acting over a small amount of time. So typical time differences between T1 and T2 for impacts are typically in the milliseconds. Now let's go back to this example over here. This frictional force is changing the object's momentum, but the time interval is relatively large compared to this time interval, time interval over here. So that's the difference between the impulse and an impact. 
So let's go back to this statement right here. We typically do not say friction is an impulse. I mean, by definition, it is an impulse by the definition of the integral from T1 to T2 of a force acting over some given t amount of time. By this definition, friction is an impulse. But we typically do not use the linear momentum equation for frictional forces or external forces that are friction. And that's because we can describe this scenario or the change in velocity of the ball in a different equation. And that equation is simply the work energy equation, such that the kinetic energy initially plus the work done onto the object due to external forces equals the final kinetic energy. This equation right here can be used for this scenario to describe the change in velocity, which indirectly measures the change of momentum. And that's because frictional forces can be easily translated into this concept of energy. And it'll be more suitable because more than likely we'll be able to measure this type of distance and relate it to this idea of work because we could say that work equals F times D. And we could simply plug in into this equation to find how the object's velocity changes over time. Now you might be asking, okay, I could see how we don't have to use momentum in this equation, but why can't we just use kinetic energy or the work energy principle in this, e in this scenario? where the ball is in contact for a very small amount of time with a bat and changes its momentum due to that contact. And the reason is this contact is actually more difficult to describe in terms of energy. And that's because there is this idea of heat being emitted from this contact force or the contact between the ball and the baseball bat. And there's actually sound being emitted as well. And both these values, heat and sound, are forms of energy. And it is actually quite difficult to quantify this form of energy and use the work energy principle in this scenario. And also, if we want to define work of this force, it's very hard to calculate that idea of distance between the contact surface and the ball. See, in this case, it's easy to define that distance because the frictional force acts over a, a relatively large amount of time which relates to a relatively large distance between one state to another. But in this scenario, there's no really idea of distance because the contact happens very, very quickly. So it's difficult to use that work energy equation to develop this idea of work. And not only that, is that there's other forms of energy that occur when, there's, when an impulse interacts with an object. So due to having difficulties in quantifying heat and sound, because those are forms of energy, it is easier to look at the linear momentum principle to describe the object's change in velocity. And that's simply because that equation only depends on the initial momentum, the final momentum, and the contact force or the impulse. And therefore, we don't have to look at the energy state of the system. And we could ignore these quantities such as heat and sound and develop an equation that we could use to find an object's final velocity or initial velocity when it collides with something. So that's why we don't typically say that friction is an impulse because we could just use this idea of the work energy principle to describe the object's change in velocity. But when an object collides with something for a very brief amount of time, we use the idea of momentum to describe the object's change in velocity. So the main thing to get from this video is that whenever you have a collision, you have to apply momentum. And that's simply because if you apply the work energy principle on this scenario, you're going to not have equations that are necessarily true because you're not accounting for, for different kinds of energies such as heat and sound that are created when there is an impulse. So just remember this, when there is a collision, use momentum equations. It is more than essential that you have to use these equations. Now in some problems in dynamics, we might have some particle or some box or ball, whatever you want to call it, that's rolling along some surface and some time later it might hit like this spring or something. 
And sometimes the problem say, says that the spring plate might have zero mass. And in this case, we do not have to apply momentum, although there is a collision between the ball and the plate. And that's simply because if you remember our momentum equation, it is dependent on mass or an object's inertia. So if this plate has zero inertia, we don't have to use momentum to describe that collision. However, if this plate does have some sort of mass, then we do have to apply momentum when the collision occurs to find maybe the change in the spring's displacement or something. So be cautious of that. So although there are collisions in these dynamics problems, not every collision needs the momentum impulse equation. And that's simply because sometimes in the problem itself, it says you could ignore the mass of some certain object. Therefore, they're implying that you don't have to use the momentum equation. But if there is mass, if two particles or two objects with mass are colliding with each other, we do have to apply momentum. So if there is a collision, use the momentum equation. So that's the main thing to get from this video. Okay, so I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to impulse and impact. Again, this is the main point to get out of this video. This is the reason why we're talking about this. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.